I'm a political scientist. I look at, uh, I research what politics looks like when it's intertwined with the internet and social media. Because that's what's happening. A growing percentage of people spend growing proportions of their time online. That's long been true of the developed world. It's increasingly true of developing countries as well. <coughs> so what does part political participation look like um, on the internet and social media? Basically, tiny acts of political participation become viable. People entertain themselves online, educate themselves online, they shop, work, bank, date, borrow, steal, if that's what they're into. And they come across all sorts of opportunities to participate politically. Clicking like, changing a status, joining an email campaign, signing an electronic petition, tweeting, retweeting, etc. You know them all, you're exposed to them all in your daily lives. And people seem to be taking up these opportunities, even groups that we traditionally think of as not participating, young people, for example. These sound insignificantly small, they sound like nothing, but they, these tiny acts scale up to large-scale mobilisation. We've seen it in authoritarian states, in the revolutions of the Arab Spring, for example, where key websites um, gradually built up resistance against the regime that tipped over to demonstrate key demonstrations like this. We see it in democratic states where mass email campaigns um, and electronic petitions have gained millions of supporters which have really brought about policy change. But because we hear so much about the success of social media and mobilisation, we forget that actually most mobilisations fail and we never hear about them at all. One robust finding across countries is that 99% of electronic petitions go absolutely nowhere. And we don't know much about why the ones that succeed do succeed. In the UK, for example, petitions started at exactly the same time about the same issue, how to stop um, the culling of cute badgers like these, have had completely different fates. One of them bombed out completely, one of them got millions of, uh, uh, got, got, got huge numbers of supporters. There's other things we, we don't know. Because mobilizations like this can be get going without the traditional trappings of, of, of mobilization, without leaders and institutions, for example, when the Brazilian president asked to speak to the lead in that demonstration, she was told there aren't any leaders. They're characterized by tipping points, going uh, uh, gradually um, rising and then tipping over into critical mass. So mobilizations like this are unstable, they're unpredictable, they're difficult to understand. At the Oxford Internet Institute, we've developed a model of chaotic pluralism um, to try and encapsulate this. It's a real challenge for states to understand and predict. But the good news is that social media also provide the solution. Every tiny act leads to a digital trace like this. Those digital traces can be mined to generate um, what we call big data. Big data can, uh, real-time transactional data of a kind social science has never had before. It's the kind of data that natural scientists have, people like, like, like Chris. We can start to use that to understand social systems in the same way as scientists have understood natural systems. Here, a member of our research team, for example, has used a Wikipedia page views to predict the last Iranian election more successfully than any conventional method of analysis. Some people have argued that it, just as meteorologists have got better at predicting the weather, political scientists um, can get better at predicting um, politics. Here, um, because uh, uh, people were, uh, meteorologists were able to predict the weather and the floods that overtook, that's Oxford two weeks ago, um, quite close to where I live, um, the, the city of Oxford was able to react more quickly and provide better flood defences than it usually does. Understanding chaotic systems like this can lead us, um, can lead policymakers to be able to make better environmental policy. The read across for governments and political institutions is that by understanding political mobilization, like these uh, snowmen against globalization, and being able to understand their concerns, their experiences, their complaints, their preferences, their behavior, and their needs they may be able to design policies that are actually a far better reflection um, of, of uh, what's going on in their country than previously, be able to kind of see like a citizen rather than seeing like a state.